everyone it's Michael here from Custom Bike Fit and doing another bike review today and the bike um, that I'm reviewing is the Quintana Roo PR6 and specifically the rim brake model. Quintana Roo make a number of models um, the PR6 rim, the PR6 disc, they also make the PR5 in a rim and a disc brake and there are just there's some small differences between each of the bikes which I think are worthy of their own little review so I'm going to review each of the bikes and I want to start with a disclaimer because this is the bike that I ride I, I ride a, 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 a QRPR6 rim brake model so that's number one uh, number two is I have a relationship with Quintana Roo in that I have access to their wholesale pricing and I have brought a number of these bikes in for clients so where this bike has been the right fit um, from a geometry perspective and also fit for purpose I've brought some of these bikes in on behalf of uh, on behalf of my clients so just want to get those points out of the way first now as I said I'm riding one of these bikes I'm riding the rim brake model PR6 and Previous to having the Quintana Roo, I owned a Trek Speed Concept, and prior to the Trek Speed Concept, I had a Cervelo uh, P3, an old P3 Classic, and I've really enjoyed all three of those bikes. With the Cervelo, it I put on it took me four sets of aero bars to get that right. I bought that in 2007, and it was in 2012 when I first started uh, fitting that I, um, I found an appropriate set of aero bars, go figure. And in 2014 I bought, or just before actually 2014 I bought a, um, no it was 2014 I bought the Trek Speed Concept. So I had the Cervelo for seven years and I had the Speed Concept for about five years and then I got into the Quintana Roo. Okay, the Quintana Roo is without a doubt the best bike that I've ridden and that's from a fit perspective and fit for purpose so as you know I'm a big fan of top tube storage and I'm a big fan of behind the seat storage I think for triathletes and particularly if you're going long course these are two things that you that you need and the top tube storage it is uh, it's fairly spacious it uses a zipper it's a it's like a rubber casing sits on top of the top tube so it bolts in you can take it off if you want but because it's rubber it's kind of you know it's it provides some waterproofing the only thing I would say about the zipper and it's a two-way zipper as in there's one zipper that goes forwards and one that goes back um, which is just handy uh, when you're riding that you can put in either direction um, one thing about zippers is I'm making sure that I'm wiping these down after each and every ride I'm a heavy sweater and I just do find sometimes zip get a bit of corrosion on them and, and you don't want to be in a situation where you really need to get in there and you can't because the zip's corroded but it's a very handy storage uh, storage box and there are two different sizes and I think the size is very uh, dependent on the size of the frame you get so the larger the frame the bigger the top tube storage and the same can be said about the storage at the behind the bike these boxes get bigger um, as the frames get larger as well so the Quintana Roo is available in a number of sizes 48, 50, 52, 54, 56, 58.5 they've got a lot of sizes which is awesome the only thing one of the features about the uh, the uh, QR box is they've got a little light here it really is redundant um, as soon as you start dripping any water on here and if you carry any bottles behind you, you just, you're just going to drip water there if it rains. These things tend to short out. I took my battery out of the lid and I just don't use this uh, light at all. It's not bright enough anyway. It's a nice little feature, but it's just not practical. But the top tube storage and the behind the seat storage, they, they do work. And you can get plenty in there and they're easy to access. So that's a big plus. The bike itself is triathlon specific. Quintana Roo, uh, not a people, lot of people know, but they actually made the first triathlon bike, triathlon time trial bike, and that's really been their focus. They are moving into road bikes, but for me, it's triathlon bikes for Quintana Roo. 
so triathlon specific geometry if we go to the C post now I've mentioned this before in other reviews with this C post we've got a range of 76 degrees to 83 degrees so the seat we've got a seat tube and then the seat post we can effectively move people back and we can move them forward that's awesome i like adjustability in the saddle position and we certainly have that with the Quintana Roo. the really smart thing they've done if you can see this channel here is the channel actually moves up at an angle so when you move a saddle forward so for example if we undo this clamp and we move the whole thing forward what we've done is we've changed the leg extension and in moving forward we shorten that extension the channel in this seat post actually pitches up so that takes care of that discrepancy in the leg extension same thing when you move back when you move back it moves down because when you're moving the saddle back you're actually increasing the extension so you know you can undo this you can undo this clamp you can move it from 76 degrees to 83 degrees and then obviously you've got the movement in the saddle itself so the saddle rail sitting on that clamp heaps of adjustability it's a big plus okay moving to the front of the bike QR have their own stem it's called a QR stem and uh, that comes in three different sizes I think it's 75 mil 1 no, no, 75 90 and 110 and the awesome thing about this is that you can specify the your stem length stem length so Quintana Roo will sell the bike in a frame set so you get the frame you get the forks you get the stem or your choice of stem and you get the seat post and then you can put on whatever group set you like or alternatively you can buy a complete bike and if you buy a complete bike the other bits that you can choose obviously you can choose the group set and this is where they've in my opinion again are really smart they let you choose your crank length which a lot of bike manufacturers don't if you go and buy a bike off the shelf in the shop it's going to have a certain crank on there and then it's up to you to guess to to have the discussion with the bike shop if it's got for example a 172.5 crank on there and you really need 165 well that's a discussion you need to have before you purchase the bike would you change them out for me but with Quintana Roo you just specify the crank length that you want they, they'll, they'll let you have 170s sorry 165s 170s and 172.5s are the options so that's fantastic so you can choose your crank length and you can choose your stem length the other thing you can choose is your color now the Quintana Roo comes in I think it's about 10 or 11 different colors at the moment so you get a choice of color and then a choice of decal there's about two or three decals usually that go with each frame color so you can customize it you can make it your bike you don't have to have oh the Cervelo this year comes in red well I'm not a fan of red um, you know you, you can choose the color you want that's a really again really smart with Quintana Roo and the other thing that they've done is well other two things they've done in the saddle they partnered with ISM ISM win the saddle count in Kona every single year so the PR6 um, comes with an ISM PN 2.1 saddle so uh, performance narrow but it's one of the longer saddles so for me it sits in that performance long and performance narrow narrow in between the two families and they call it the PN 2.1 it's got this they call it a transition hook so if you're doing a short course race you can actually hook your bike in tra transition on the on, on this uh, on the back of the saddle just helps you get out of transition real quickly and at the front of the bike they partnered with uh, profile design who make in my opinion uh, some of the best aero bars on the market and these with the uh, PR6 rim because the disc brake you get a different set of aero bars and that's one of the reasons why I wanted to do a separate review this is the profile design area Evo aero bar okay now they have a fair bit of adjustability so um, we've got an independent uh, base bar and extension and arm pad which is awesome if you want to find replacement parts it looks like an integrated bar but you can pull pieces off right, so you get I guess the best of both worlds it comes with a riser kit as well so you can lift these pads up you've got a lot of flexibility in how high you can come up at the front 
which again is a really good thing. And these these arm pads are the uh, that they use with these bars are the uh, Sonic Ergo pads. There's 90 different fit options in the pad, and they are a comfortable pad. The one thing I'm I'm not a big fan of uh, Profile Design actually make three different types of extension. They make this extension, which is called a 35 or 35 degree extension. They also make a 50, which comes up obviously higher. And they make what's called a 45, 25, which comes up, kicks up, and then it throws. Okay. Out of the three, this is my least favorite. All right. So what I've what I've done in the past is I've changed these extensions, and for that I would allow if you want uh, alloy extensions, allow 100 bucks. If you want carbon extensions, well, it's a little bit over twice that. So it's something you need to factor in. The other thing I found. Even though if you buy the extension separately from Profile Design, the full length extensions are 400 mil long. For some reason, Quintana Roo have been buying extensions that are 340 millimeters long. Now that's fine if you're, if you're small, so somebody that might be sitting on a, a 48 or even a 50 centimeter frame, they might get away with those with that length extension. But for the majority of people that I fit on these bikes, it's not long enough. And you know you need to buy the extensions, uh, those this, those additional extensions anyway. So factor that in. One thing that you don't have on the area Evo uh, Aero bars is a tilt. So I've actually had manufactured with a local engineer slash mechanic on the Sunshine Coast, Ashley from High Gear Racing. We've developed a uh, 15 degree wedge which sits underneath here, and then tilts the pad and the extensions. That means you can get away, in my opinion, with the 35 degree extensions because it brings everything up a little bit higher. Or again, you can choose to change those extensions out. So um, a feature that's, that isn't originally available from Profile Design with this area Evo bar, it is on the area Ultimate, which is the next uh, bar up. And that bar, those bars are, are come as standard with the, uh, the PR6 disc. But as I said, I, I can supply those wedges. They're one hundred and sixty-five dollars. Um, what else to say? Really easy to travel with this bike. There, even though we look like we've got we've got this sort of integrated front end. Yes, you can see a brake cable here, but the only other cables you, that you'll find here are coming out of um, the back of these extensions, the DI two cables. The junction box typically sits in here, so it's nice and easy to access. Um, there's four bolts to undo here and then the stem comes off or you can take the top of the stem off because it's two pieces and you can take the bars out then it makes it really easy to pack the bike away that's number one so traveling with the bike is uh, a lot less stressful than, than those bikes that have a completely integrated front end and the second thing is because it's profile design and there are individual pieces if you were to break you know, if in damage in transit, the base bar, you can buy another. It doesn't have to be this exact base bar. You could just buy an alloy base bar and, uh, and, and you should be able to get away uh, and race. The same thing if you break an extension or you damage an arm cup. You could walk down to basically any Ironman Expo anywhere in the world and say, who's got profile design? And I reckon two hands would go up. So you can find replacement parts very easily, they're not expensive, not uh, terribly costly, and within a short time frame. So again, traveling, most people arrive at a race uh, a day or two, maybe three days before the race starts. If you have had any damage to the front end of the bike, you want to know that you can get replacement parts easily, and it's not going to cost you an arm and a leg. So again, that's a big tick in the box for Quintana Roo. So. In summary, I personally believe that this is the best triathlon bike on the market right now. From a fit perspective, there's lots of different sizes available. There's, it's highly adjustable. They've partnered with the right people in terms of saddle, aero bars. It's easy to travel with. You've got great storage options. And you can customize it. You can choose your stem length. You can choose your crank length. You can choose your color. So big, um, you know... Uh, big tick from me. Love the bike. I've been riding it now for about eight months. Anyway, 
I will do a separate review of the PR6 disc because it does have a different front end. And then I'll do a uh, review of the PR5 as well. I think all of the bikes are worthy of a review. I hope you've enjoyed that. And uh, I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thank you.